Good morning, check this out. Insta360 GO 2 is what we're talking about today. Sorry about the kind of crappy lighting. It's still like 4.30 a.m. You know, getting an early start to the day as usual because that's what it's about. If you're trying to get stuff done, you want to be successful, you got to wake up early. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. I never wake up this early. I had trouble sleeping. It's actually kind of nice. Like, check it out. It's empty here. It's never empty here. I've never seen this. I've never been up before 8 a.m. before. <laughs> we have Storyblock sponsoring today's episode, so we are doing a giveaway with three of these. And not gonna lie, my expectations for this camera wasn't that high, because look how dinky it is. How good could it really be? But I'm actually pretty impressed. So let me go ahead and fire this up while I tell you about our sponsor. Now, Storyblock is the place to go get access to over a million stock assets, including royalty-free videos, music, sound effects, after effects templates. Before you even get an account, you can actually go and see if they have what you need because you can just go to their website, type in whatever you're looking for and see if it pops up. I'm gonna throw a link down there in the description so you can go check them out. And if you think that they can provide value to your projects and your videos, which you can use them for you know, commercials or or home videos or I don't know, whatever videos you're making, go ahead, use it. And we personally use the unlimited all access plan which gives us access to unlimited downloads. So all the things you see on there, you can download a million things if you want in one month, use it. Thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this episode. Links down there in the description. And we are starting to get some sunrise, so let's head over to the beach. Now action cameras have never been that good in low light, but this might be a good chance for me to compare this low light capability to the original Go. I imagine the image quality being quite a bit better. And also here's the sound. I believe there's been improvements as well. So far, we've been using the audio from this microphone, but here, I'm gonna switch over to the mic from the Go 2. So here it is. Here is how I sound. When I'm recording with this camera and now let's switch over to the original go and here's how the audio here sounds now in terms of image quality I imagine it being quite a bit better especially in dimly lit situations like this because there is a much bigger sensor in the go 2 here let me show you the size difference the go 2 is slightly bigger than the original one but compared to the hero 9 check out the difference in size there so if this can get similar image quality to this 9 I mean that'd be pretty impressive right I'm not bashing the GoPro by the way I love this camera but here just check out the size difference though with the case and everything, it's still a little bit smaller. This might be a kind of a cool time lapse right here. Should we do it? All right, let's go. Not gonna lie though, this whole waking up early thing is actually pretty nice. I kind of want to try doing this regularly, but I hate waking up early, I don't know. All right, so now looking at some more low light footage, it definitely is solid for an action camera of this size, but there was something kind of weird going on in the background of this shot, where it almost looks like the texture doesn't necessarily line up with the stabilization of the shot. I don't really know what's going on there, but I have noticed it in a few other shots that I shot when it was really dark and there's a lot of pavement. I think it has something to do with that specific color not processing perfectly, I'm not sure. I just sent it over to Insta360 and they're having their engineer look at it right now and they say it's possible that they might be able to fix it in a firmware update but of course action cameras aren't really designed for low light and I noticed as soon as I got a little bit of light coming in I didn't notice any more of that weird wobbly background effect and when you compare it to the first Insta360 Go it is significantly better not just in low light but highlight retention is so much better we can shoot log which gives us so much more dynamic range and it's just overall a significantly better picture I always thought the Go was cool because of how small it was and you could get a stabilized image out of it but I never considered the image quality to be that good but now with this upgrade the footage out of here is not looking bad actually but the reason why I'm so excited about this go to is the weight and how I can mount it onto different FPV drones so this GoPro Hero 9 is about 158 grams for a pretty powerful 5 inch drone you won't even notice it's on there but I fly some lighter drones so what I do is I actually pull out the battery and this is the Hero 8 because it is lighter and I'll just use this cable and power this off the drone just to get a little bit of that weight down and now we are looking at about 94 grams so we actually shaved off what like a, a third of the weight now some of you may remember when we stripped down the GoPro Hero 6 to make it a naked GoPro just to get the weight as light as possible especially for our smaller drones every gram counts so this brings it down to about 26 grams which is great that's very very little weight but at the same time you have to figure out how to power it. it's not the most reliable or most user-friendly camera to use now this go to is the same 
same way as Naked GoPro, but it already has a built-in battery, so you don't have to worry about how to power it. It's very user-friendly, and the image quality out of it is pretty solid. I wouldn't say the footage is as good as GoPro for FPV because GoPros just have more power in the camera, and also I like to use Real Steady, which is some really crazy good stabilization, but this is so much simpler. All I have to do is just figure out how to mount it. I hit record. I don't have to worry about powering it with extra cables or soldering or anything like that. I just hit record and take off. Now the image quality out of this GoTo is surprisingly good. I just had an opportunity to fly it through this big house. I put it into 50 frames per second and I slowed it down a little bit just to extra smoothen it out a little bit, but it really didn't look bad. Some of these rooms weren't even that bright, but we were still able to get a pretty clean image out of it. And the stabilization is very easy to do because you could just do it all from your phone. So you don't even have to send any of the footage to a computer if you don't want to. This is light enough to be able to mount on this little FPV drone. This is what I'm working on right now. Just to give you perspective, this is the DJI FPV drone that everyone's talking about right now. And check it out. This thing is the size of one little propeller. So I want this to be my super tiny quad with a load of power. Now I used to mount the original Go to this, but the image quality just wasn't doing it for me. The highlights were just way too blown out all the time and the image quality just, eh, eh, not a fan. Winston knows how to fly an FPV drone properly. What do you think of my little setup that I got going right here? That looks like fun. Oh wow, this thing's quick. It's not bad, huh? I know, that's, yeah. <laughs> Better than you were expecting? Much, yeah. All right, so Winston's gonna fly the five inch with a GoPro on there just so we can compare the two. Yeah, okay, cool. Cool, ready? All right. Wow, you're really smooth with it. Yes, that's that's always... That takes a lot of practice, huh? Practice and muscle memory with your rate. Oh, wow. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna try this again, but we have the Go 2 on the five inch drone. I put some rubber bands on here because I know this is gonna fling out. It's just magnetically in there, so little safety measure. I never said I wouldn't wreck. <laughs> Wait. Oh, wow, yes. Is it lighter? Definitely noticeable. You feel it? Oh, huh? yes. I thought since the five inch was so powerful, you wouldn't even notice, but you do, huh? Yes, no, I noticed. I mean, just coming off the ground there it was definitely noticeable. Uh, yeah, you can get down in there. Yeah. Oh man, you make that look so easy. Also, it's nice that I can just go ahead and download this footage now before we send it back out. Because it's the worst when you send out a drone and you crash it or lose it and you're like, man, I wish I had that memory card still. Losing the footage hurts more than losing the drone sometimes. sometimes yeah. <laughs> I do actually want to try one flight without the pro mode. So this is going to be stabilized footage just straight out of the camera. And if this works well, that'll even save me more time because I literally just download the file and we're good to go. Oh, you're right. Yeah. It's uh, way lighter. So it, the throttle is uh, going to be touchier down in the lower range. I did not expect it to make that much of a difference, but no, I feel it. Man, this thing just, this thing moves without that weight. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh! Ah! <laughs> when you do it, there's just so much flow. When I do it, I'm just like, oh, 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 what, 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 uh, uh, okay, this way, okay, let me get to it. Uh. Man, it's just, what? dude, that, that takes off. Like it hangs a lot longer without that weight, I feel like. It just. So, it's definitely flowing. Now, one thing though, about hang time though is the more mass you have, is you can store up more inertia going upward. Oh, I see. And it holds that inertia going upward longer. I see. You do get more hang time, but it's more, to me anyway, I feel like it's more floaty. Yeah. So it's not pulling exactly. down Exactly. Well. It, it feels like I'm a bubble coming down. Yes. Opposed to like a rock. rock. But in the same respect, if you throw a bubble up, it doesn't go as quickly right. as far yeah. versus a rock. Exactly. So there's a trade-off. So there are definitely... Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. That's my limit right there. That's, that's my signal to put this thing down and let's wrap up this video. <laughs> Check this out. We have our USB-C down here on the bottom and we have our quarter inch so we can put on a tripod. It also turns into a tiny little tripod. It's actually really well thought out, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. And look, when I'm done with it, boom, close, put it in the pocket, done. Overall thoughts on the new Go 2? It's pretty good. Really good it? improvement. Yes. Yeah, I'll take it. This one's for you.
All right, let's see what's inside because I actually haven't seen what it comes with. Oh snap, that looks awesome. Oh my, oh, did you? Samuel. Aha, uh -huh, so you get a case, a little swivelly thing. Swivelly thing. All right, so this one just clips onto like what, a hat or whatever. Charging in your case. Yeah, and the magnetic pendant. That. Oh, that's back here. Well, I hope I didn't break it already. This one right here, I'm kind of curious about because you slide it out and it's kind of like some sticky material. Yeah, so I think it might be one of those ones that you can reuse a couple times. Oh. Is it removable now or is it permanently on there? It sticks really good on there. It sticks okay. pretty good? Yeah. Okay, but it comes off. Try washing it real quick. Okay, and then I kind of dry it off and see if it sticks again. Cool. Which and it's kind of nice. Yeah. Because like you don't have to commit. Security cam mode on. Yeah, I wonder if it'll ever fall though. It's not that much weight. I feel like it should stick on pretty good. That's kind of nice actually, having it reusable. What is that face? On top of the improved image quality, there's a huge improvement in the overall design and usability of this. This is the original one. You have to pull off this cap. And one of the things I complained about in the original review is I wish it had hinges. Also, this one, it's easy to put on the wrong way. But of course, on this new Go 2, we have a hinge. And also, the way the magnets are set up, you can't actually put it in the wrong way. It wants to pop back out. So it only goes in one way. And having the controller down here is genius. Now, if you're not familiar with how this works, it's kind of like AirPods where you can take it out of here and use a standalone which has limited battery life but then you put it back here and it charges while it's in the case but now you can also use it while it's in the case which is awesome that's going to extend the battery life and it's just kind of a nice little grip and you can control the camera from here so you know what the status of the camera is that's huge because before we were just looking at a little light and you're trying to figure out is it recording is it taking a picture is it taking a time lapse and this is actually a wireless controller so if you have this mounted somewhere where it's not easy to access then you can still hit record from here and change all the settings it really makes a big difference on understanding what the camera is doing also a replaceable lens a necessity for any sort of action camera the original one didn't have it so you could actually see some of the scuff marks from when i crashed it on the fpv drone it's also waterproof now up to 13 feet you can't bring this case in with you but you can go ahead and take this now the back here is still magnetic just like the previous one so a lot of these accessories is going to magnetically attach to and this has got to be my favorite accessory because you can just wear it underneath your shirt and you can clip it in just like that. It's not in the way. You don't have to put on any sort of a chest harness. You definitely have to be careful with this because it is very easy to lose because a lot of times you forget you're even wearing it and all it takes is for you to just, you know, swipe it and it flies off. Oops. Last year when we went to Thailand, Insta360 was nice enough to gift everyone a little go, the original one. And my favorite part of everyone having one of these was that it's very unobtrusive. You can still go and enjoy whatever you're doing and you don't have to constantly think, oh, how am I going to mount this? Am I going to put on the harness? Am I going to mount it on something? It's very easy to just put it on here like this. You could go ahead and stick it on the side of a bike. So I definitely think there's a benefit to having something this ridiculously small because you can really just forget about filming and you could pretty much just wear it everywhere you go. And everyone was able to get some really creative, cool shots with the original Go. So now if everyone had this upgraded Go too, those shots would be so much better. Now, one thing I did mention with my original review was I wish there was some sort of spot where I can feed a leash through for safety. Unfortunately, we still don't have anything like that for the go to. So be careful when you have it on the shirt. I think two people lost theirs in Thailand because they were wearing this and they forgot they had it on and they knocked it off somewhere in the jungle. Now, when it comes to video modes, there is a regular video mode, which is going to give you a pre stabilized image that you can just straight up download. Or there's a pro video mode that's going to capture the entire lens. And then later in the app, you could decide if you want to extract a nine by 16 portrait shot or a square shot or a 16 by nine shot. Each one of those is going to give you a different field of view of the frame. Now, Insta360 did tell me that the sensor in here is the same size as the GoPro Hero 9. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that because to me, it looks like the sensor squares. So does it mean the sensor is as big, but it's only using part of the sensor? Or are they saying when you crop in, that's as much as the GoPro? Probably not. I'm still not sure what they mean by that. But the image quality compared to the GoPro Hero 9 is surprisingly close. I still think the GoPro has the advantage. It has more power. It has different frame rates. It has more bit rate and all those features. But I was surprised to see that even in some shots, the Insta360 Go 2 actually even looked a little bit better than the Hero 9. So that was not something I was expecting at all. I was expecting the difference to be much more significant. So great job to Insta360 for making this look so good for something this small. You probably also noticed that the lens on the Go 2 is really, really wide, even after 
after you extract that 16 by 9 frame out of it. We also get 1080p at 120 frames per second for those slow-mo shots. And again, when you just keep in mind how small this camera is, it's really impressive how decent this image looks. I'm not trying to say this is the most cinematic footage I've ever seen, but wow, like considering the size of this thing, this looks good and it's stabilized. Also, when you compare it to the original Go, huge upgrade in audio quality, especially if there's any sort of wind. It sounds so much cleaner and fuller. It's still not perfect. I mean, no action camera has perfect audio yet, but it's a huge improvement. Also, a huge drawback of the original Go is that it had a one minute record time limit for video. And that's because it gets hot. So if you actually go into FPV mode, there's a lot of wind. So they actually extended that out to five minutes, but you're only supposed to use that if it's on an FPV drone or else it could overheat. Now those limits are way better on the go too. 10 minutes with the pro video mode, 15 minutes in regular video mode, or 30 minutes in FPV. So that's way better. Of course, I would have wished for no record time limit, but this is definitely much more reasonable. And also you're limited on space in here. So you don't want to just keep recording anyways, because we have about 32 gigs in here. I think they said 28 gigs of that is usable. And that's not that much. I definitely run out fairly fast. So I'm constantly downloading, but it's definitely much better than the original Go, which I think was what, six gigs or eight gigs, something in that range. It wasn't very much at all. Now, a lot of times I'm mounting action cameras onto a helmet and this also works pretty well like that. The biggest downside is gonna be the battery life because when you pull it out of the case, the battery life gets so much shorter. So you're not gonna be able to do long rides with it mounted on your helmet. But one thing I did like is that you can keep the controller in your pocket so you can actually check the status of what your helmet cam is doing while you're still wearing it. And that's actually really nice because before a lot of times I would have to take off my helmet, look at the camera, make sure it's recording. Cool, put it back on. And in terms of mounting, there are ways to adapt these to GoPro mounts. This doesn't come in the box with the camera, but it does seem like they're gonna be selling it as an accessory. You also have different picture profiles to choose from. You can choose between vivid, standard, and log. All right, so let's say you're the type that just wants a good file straight out of camera. You don't wanna have to stabilize the image afterwards, or you don't wanna have to deal with log files and having a color grade and doing all that stuff. These are just straight out of camera camera files on the go to I have it on vivid and on the GoPro I have it on GoPro color so I have a little bit less flexibility with these files but they should both look pretty decent right out of camera and stabilize so how do these look Dylan what do you think which camera do you like better that one how do you know another feature that's kind of nice is that I can preview the footage from my phone even if the camera isn't in its case the original go all you could do is just start or stop recording but you couldn't get a reference view of what you're recording and of course all the settings and all that we can adjust right here you've had a chance to play with this camera for a little bit right the a go to what's your thoughts it's a big upgrade over the original because you have a screen to let you know what it's doing what mode and then just the little small details that they thought of it having this for a time lapse to be able to just not even think about it sit down and do a time lapse quarter 20 in there like it's the little small things they thought about is a huge improvement i think if someone were to ask me like oh should i get a gopro or should i get one of these i think it really just comes down to like well what kind of uses are you going to be using it for are you okay with the bigger size of a gopro but you get more power or do you benefit off having something this small which there are a lot of benefits to it Absolutely. like lighter weight on there you could also magnetically just clip it on your shirt being able to hold it out and talk to it and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like if you want to run oh, and yeah. gun, like vlog style stuff, like you, dude, it's hard to beat that. The horizon lock. Yeah, yeah. You can literally turn it the whole way around. Exactly. Check it out. So we're rotating this camera here, and we still look upright. So horizon lock built in. This lens is crazy wide yes. also. I mean, when it comes to the hardware, I think it's really impressive. There's nothing really else like it at this size. And that's one thing I really respect about Insta360 is they're always kind of coming out with new things. They're not just putting out other action cameras that everyone else has already kind of done. They really come up with new things. It's so different from like a GoPro or Osmo Action or anything that's out there really. Like if there's anything that I think could still be improved on, I would say is the app. I mean, in general, it works. It does what you need to do. But I mean, for example, when you're looking through your files, sometimes you have 50 different clips on here and it could be hard to know what you already downloaded or what you still need to download or which clip is which. But it would be nice if they were labeled with numbers so that you could at least be like, oh, that's that clip. Or if there was a way to see which ones have already been exported. Just because when I have a bunch of clips, a lot of times I get lost. I go, oh crap, which ones did I already export out? Which ones have I already seen? Also by default, the shot on watermark is always on. So every time I install the app, I render out a clip <laughs> and on the bottom it's like, shot on Insta360. And yeah, I get it. Like they, they want to do their brand 
trending, but I don't know. That's the first thing I always go. Yeah, I'm always yeah. like, oh, come on, GoPro doesn't do that. DJI doesn't do that. Can we just can we just have that off on default? I mean, these are easy things. They're, they're pretty minor complaints. So yeah, overall, very solid camera. I'll throw links in the description and all that good stuff. And sorry, I'm exhausted. It's like 3 a.m. because I was up editing this video. This video is supposed to go live in like two hours or something like that. So yeah, my sleeping schedule has been all over the place. But now here's the awkward end of the video where I don't know how to do a proper outro. So in the last video, I asked you guys to film an outro for me and email it to here. And I'll start featuring your guys' talent and work and creativity and inspirational stuff that you guys make at the end of the video. I'm so excited to showcase how creative and talented you guys are. The first submission comes to us from Julian. So let's roll the clip. Now this might be a little weird, but I'm sitting on the toilet right now and I'm supposed to do an outro for Potato Jet. <laughs>